Okay, everybody, this is Movie Dash Cam. Today, we are in Corona, Queens. We're going to be talking about Anthony Tough Tony Federici, a high ranking member of the Genovese crime family. He just recently passed away last week, November 9th, at 82 years old. In this video, we're going to be visiting the Parkside restaurant, the restaurant he owned and was a chef at. So let's flip this around and get into it. The address of his restaurant that we're going to is 107. 01 Corona Avenue, Corona, Queens. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Moody Dashcam. Any crime scene photos that I can't put on YouTube go onto the Instagram and I post them there pretty much every single day. So check that out. Also, don't forget to leave suggestions for future videos in the comments. I get a lot of inspiration that way and hit the notification bell so you guys can see exactly when I post a new video. Okay, let's get into Tough Tony's life a little bit here. So everything you'll read will pretty much say he's a Genovese captain or was a Genovese captain. It seems to me like he had a very concealed life. So a lot of the information out on him seems like a guesses to me. I could be wrong on some of this, but you'll read in a lot of places that he was a consigliere at the time that he died, which is higher up than a captain. Then he was also the former acting underboss. That's what I read at least. I also read that he was the acting boss when Vincent the Chinjaganti was in a large racketeering case. So he's been through a lot of ranks of the Genovese family. And at the time of his death, he was believed to be retired from the Mafia, which is kind of shelved. You don't really ever retire, but he wanted to go off and just focus on his restaurant towards the end of his life. Like I said, he was the owner and chef at the Parkside restaurant. It started out as his parents' place called the Corona Supper Club with only seven tables. Now there's 50 plus tables there. He described the food they served as peasant food. This was a mama and papa restaurant with seven tables. And they used to cook peasant food, pasta fazul, pasta lendique, gabuzel, soufrite. Pasta and beans lungs and organ meat fried with peppers, tomatoes, and parsley. It is a very well-known restaurant now, one of the best in the area. Tony said at one point in the early days there was actually a boxing ring in the basement. I'm gonna be putting up snippets of an interview that he did not too long ago, which a lot of people thought was weird because you never really get to see an active member of the mafia, especially this high ranking, talking on video. He was doing an interview about his restaurant. So I'll be adding those in periodically for this. He had a pigeon coop on the roof. He loved all his pigeons very much. They were prize winning homing pigeons. His father didn't like that he was into birds and pigeons. Tony said growing up that he wanted a pigeon coop. But my father didn't like the idea. And I couldn't understand why. <clears throat> he didn't want me to have that chicken coop. His father was very against it because they came from farmers back in Calabria, Italy, and he didn't want to look like he came here and couldn't make it on his own as an American businessman, so he had to farm for himself. So he didn't like the fact that his son was into these pigeons and chickens and stuff like that. Now, Tough Tony came up in the mafia under the underboss Mickey Domino Generoso. Now let's get into some of his uh, run-ins with the law. March 13th, 2000. Now, you'll read this happened in 1979, but I don't believe it happened back then because every article that it says it happened in 1979 has a bunch of other dates messed up, which seem to spread through a bunch of articles across the internet. But, so, March 13th, 2000 is the date I believe it happened. I could be wrong. But Tony was arrested for menacing and criminal weapons charges for shooting at hawks that were harassing his pigeons off the roof of his restaurant. He fired two shots with a 20 gauge shotgun. You see that green awning right there? That is the park side. Oh, let's see if there's any parking I could steal over here. Get a good spot. That is the Lemon Ice King of Corona to the right there. Very famous neighborhood spot. Still trying to find a spot here. To the left is Spaghetti Park. You'll be able to see it. Uh, not really, but 
to the left there. Tough Tony's name comes up again in the year 2000 when Carmine Agnello was getting prosecuted for setting city scrap on fire. It was an undercover police operation. I have a whole video on that. I'll leave a link in the description. Carmine showed Tony a picture of the informant and Tony said if the snitch was found, he should get the Italian horns, which is a code for murder a lot of the times. Found a parking spot, or as other people call it, a bus stop. All right. So this right here is known as Spaghetti Park, now to William F. Moore Park. I don't know if it was ever officially named Spaghetti Park. Let's see. Got the, it was a shuffleboard, bocce ball. Park there. We'll go down. So now, again in the year 2000, Tough Tony's son got stabbed by Nick Gambino at the Metropolis nightclub in College Point that almost started a war. Um, I will link that video in my description. I have a whole video on that. The Parkside restaurant right down there. This is the park that he had 4th of July parties at and other celebrations. Big building you can see up there, the pigeon coops. Parkside restaurant. Very famous restaurant, as I mentioned before. Corner. And then we'll do a walk around back to the truck. Oh, we can't even get a good look at the awning. You see on that side. Parkside restaurant. Okay, let's take a quick walk around the block here. So then on January 24th, 2004, a Saturday at 12:20 p.m. Tony was pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt at 188th Street and 64th Avenue in Fresh Meadows in a Mercedes that was not registered to him. He also didn't have a valid license, so they searched his car and they found brass knuckles, six bullets, and mace. They charged him with weapons possession and he ended up getting community service and had to pay a $700 fine for that. There's Lemon Ice King again. This is known as like the Little Italy of uh, Corona. Not really anymore, but that's what it was known as. Say hi to the truck right there. You know what, before we get back in the car, let's cross over the street here. In 2015, this pizzeria that, as you can see, is very close to the park side, only about a block away, the owners were friends with Tony. The guy's name was Gregorio Gigliotti. This was the pizzeria right in the corner. I have a video on this also, I'll put it in the description. They got busted for being involved in an international drug trafficking ring. With um, like the Calabrian Mafia, the Unjargeta. And the guy was friends with Tony. They both have houses in Malba, so they were probably pretty good buddies, and Tony never got picked up on any of the stuff that happened. I guess he wasn't involved. It's hard to believe that he didn't know about it, because um, I also did read somewhere that he has, he's very much liked by the Calabrian Mafia, so for him to not be involved in a whole ring, either he's very lucky or he really wasn't involved. Now let's finish the story off. Quick out for check. I'm gonna swing by the restaurant one more time because I didn't want to film the guys, but it seems like maybe they're doing something for his death. And uh, there's a bunch of people that fit the part, so to speak, standing around outside. So we're gonna swing by just once and uh, maybe catch a glimpse of whatever's going on over there at the time. I don't want to be disrespectful in any way, but this is interesting and a lot of you guys don't get to see stuff like this. So. Here we go. This is a pretty crazy looking event space in front of me. It looks like a like a villain's lair from a cartoon. Pretty nuts. Now 
lot of you guys can say I'm watching too many movies or whatever. You make all the fun in the comments that you want, but I generally know know what I'm looking at when it comes to. So it seems like Tough Tony was able to keep a low profile even though he was very high up in the Mafia for very long, which is super uncommon. Like he never had to do any long prison stays or was never caught up in anything super major, which is either very lucky on his part or he made it be that way on purpose. I don't know if I mentioned, but he did die from leukemia and towards the end he had COVID. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.